Welcome back. My name is Vitor and many of you asked for a Mark II version of my hydrogen generator. And that's why today we are building an Iron Man arc reactor that turns water into the most flammable gas in the world. Now, if you take a look on YouTube, you're gonna find a lot of hydrogen generators. And my favorite by far is Alex Labs. He had this amazing idea of building a hydrogen generator that looks like an arc reactor. But this guy has access to very professional tools, CNC cutters, and the whole Soviet scrapyard. I'm here to make it simple by using everyday materials, the lowest budget possible, but still aiming for a competitive efficiency. Now to generate hydrogen, we need an electrolyzer. By passing electricity through water, we can split it into hydrogen and oxygen. No magic, just basic chemistry. I started by going to the shop to find two stainless steel parts to use as the electrodes, the pieces of metal that go into the water. And remember, it's important to use stainless steel to reduce the corrosion. Since the reactor is cylindrical, these sink strainers will work perfectly. So I fixed both of them into a single structure using a screw and added rubber and plastic washers to make sure the screw doesn't touch the strainers. And this part is very critical because the electrodes cannot touch each other. The most important part here is that they have a big surface to make contact with the water. And of course, we need a way to store the water. I found this very smooth and cylindrical plastic bottle that fits the metal parts. We needed to cut it down. Our reactor cannot be this long. I drilled two holes for the electro connections and one hole for the gas output. And to make holes on the plastic bottles, I recommend you to use a heated metal or a soldering iron. It's easy and you get more precision too. So I just had a little accident here. So I absolutely destroyed the bottle. We got another one. The electrical connections are just screws attached to wires that go directly to the strainers. For the gas output, I use tube connectors so I can make quick changes, easy fixes and keep things looking a bit more professional. Now the coolest part, let's customize it. This thing has to look like an arc reactor. I already used the Mark 1 and Mark 2 coil designs on other videos. You should take a look on it, by the way. So this time I decided to 3D print the Mark IV version. To make it light up, I used three 12 volt white LEDs. I also had to use a diffuser from a broken lamp to give the reactor a cool effect and a blue plastic party plate to make the lights, well, blue. It's a simple, cheap and surprisingly effective solution. I also wasn't sure about the color, so I had to take a look on the movies. Choose one. And I believe that this aluminum color will work very well. Since the electrolyzer is basically a short circuit, I will also add a diode in the LED connection. And as I was soldering the LEDs, I remembered how difficult it is to make a good looking circuit soldering by hand. This is a very small circuit, so it's fine, but for bigger projects like my humanoid robot, a PCB board might save you a lot of time and work. And that's where Next PCB really helped me. They offer high quality PCB manufacturing, PCB assembly services, and support for everything from simple prototypes to complex multi-layer boards. I was a total beginner at PCB designing. And one thing that really helps beginners like me is that before production starts, the next PCB engineering team reviews your files and contact you if anything requires adjustment. My sound reactive LED board for my humanoid robot communication system arrived in less than a month. So if you are building more than just a couple wires and LEDs, check out the link in the description and take your project to the next level with Next PCB. In order to test the reactor properly, I built a base to hold everything we need. The reactor, the power supply, the filter and of course a mini rocket launcher. Because why not? For electrolysis to work properly, we need enough current. So I choose a 12 volt and 5 amps power supply. I think it's enough. One very important part of this system is the protection filter. The gas produced goes all the way to the bottom of a bottle filled with water. 
then rises up and exits through the top, heading towards the rockets. If there's a backfire, the water stops the flame from reaching the reactor, and this single bottle can save the whole build from exploding. To improve the conductivity of the water, I added two spoons of baking soda. And you could also use salt, but it would increase the metal corrosion. I don't really recommend it. At this point, I felt like an alchemist. For some reason, the power supply didn't work properly. Something is wrong here, all right? Something is wrong here. You can see the bubbles, but that's not enough for our rocket. So I did the most reasonable troubleshoot. I doubled the current by using a more powerful power supply and added two, well, that might be three spoons of baking soda. Problem solved. Oh my God. Look at this, look at this. Whoa. Now let's test it with our high-tech plastic bottle rocket. It's working, it's working. As you can see, I was very surprised that it worked. And you can tell by the screams on the background that the explosion was way louder than it looks on camera. I never saw that rocket again. And that was the explosion caused by only one small bottle. Now what if we use a bigger bottle? Actually, I made a rocket using six of these bigger bottles together. I let the reactor generate hydrogen for about 15 minutes and then called a couple friends to test it. I'm scared. Bye. The rocket experienced a rapid unscheduled assembly, but fortunately our goal here was to test the fuel and not the rocket. After all the tests, the reactor was still fully functional, unlike the Mark I version where the metal parts were completely corroded. This reactor is way better than the last one. And honestly, I think it could compete with the big channels considering I spent less than $7 on it. At the end, I hope you enjoyed this build and that my rockets didn't break anyone's window. If you like this kind of experiment, consider subscribing and leaving the thumbs up. Well, that would make me very happy. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next one.